But what we really have seen over the past week is a decisive shift to a two candidate race uh, between Biden and Sanders and the momentum at this point really behind Biden. And what you're seeing, which is really interesting, is a coalescing of all the moderates behind Biden in a way that the GOP, the Republicans did not do in 2016. When you say it's becoming a two man race, the question is what happens to the third who is a lady, right. Warren, does she drop out and would she then lend her support to Sanders? Well, uh, I can't speculate too much on that, although we'll note that the most recent news feed is that she's going to reassess the direction of her campaign. Which is a euphemism for I'm going to drop out, isn't it? Well, it is to look at overhead and is to look at her options, because on the one hand, she really has helped push the tenor, the tone, and the substance of the debate. Mm -hmm. uh, some would say to the left, but in a way that almost all the candidates have embraced. And so staying in there maybe helps to push that. On the other hand, uh, she is a viable pick, not only for vice president, uh, perhaps, for both candidates, mm -hmm. uh, but also for a cabinet appointment, which might mean stepping down. And she's also, at this point, receiving enormous pressure from Bernie Sanders supporters to drop out so that her votes presumably flow to him. Come in here, Nancy. Yes, Charles, I was just going to ask, is that the case? I mean, President Trump t seemed to be suggesting that had Elizabeth Warren gone before Super Tuesday that you would have seen many more delegates going to Bernie Sanders. Is that true? I mean, what do we know in terms of Elizabeth Warren's voters going directly to Sanders if it comes to that? Uh, well, look, I don't think we should take Donald Trump's analysis of what's happening in the Democratic primary as the gospel here. Uh, but your question, I think, is really worthwhile that at this point, even if she stays in, if she stays in for a long time or a short time, I think most of her voters will move. But as you had asked, it's unclear which direction they'll move. So some will move uh, towards Sanders, some will move towards Biden. I mean, one of the most interesting results from Super Tuesday was that Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren's home state, had her yes. coming in third and Biden winning, which would suggest that as many as of her voters would move towards Biden as they would towards Sanders. So do you think if it comes to Biden versus Trump that Biden can win? Uh, he certainly has that possibility, but there are a couple of things that I think uh, we would want to consider here. So one, uh, Sanders' campaign has made the argument consistently that he is the one to mobilize the vote in a way that a moderate Democrat cannot, and therefore he can defeat Trump. What we saw on Super Tuesday is actually the mobilization of voters came from Biden, not from the Sanders uh, supporters. Uh, the second thing to note is, as people pull their hair out, because Democrats perceive that the stakes are just so high in this election, we are still very early. Uh, it is at the beginning of March. We've hit Super Tuesday, but both 2016 between Hillary and Bernie Sanders wasn't decided until June. 2008 uh, between Barack Obama and Hillary was also not decided till June. So we're a long way off uh, from having not only an outcome, no less circumstances that might be changing. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.